one thing real quick. It just jumped up in my spirit. Um, I was reading uh, the local news, and, and, and there was a, uh, one of the uh, electrical linemen, in, he was actually working, I think, in Marshall, was killed. Let's just not have any more of that. Let's just pray over these men that are working. You know, it's, it's hot out there. And they're out there working to get the lines restored. People are, I, I see people complaining about it. But listen, they're working. Amen. And um, I just had to get out in my yard and clean up debris. And I had to go sit down four or five times just to, so they're working. Father, we just thank you right now for these, uh, these men that are working, these Swepco men that are working these lines and restoring power. We thank you, Father. We pray for your divine protection for them. Lord, we thank you for a covering over them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, because we ask, we just ask you, Father, to work and to watch over them and to minister to them, Father, your protection, Lord, and give this, make this a season in their lives where maybe they'll even open their eyes of their understanding to you. We just thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Well, we've been talking about patterns of faith. I think I'm going to finish this up uh, tonight. Uh, and I just want to back up to verse 1 of Hebrews 11. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now listen to this statement. By it. By it, by what? By faith, the elders obtained a good report. By it. You know, that's a big it. Faith is a big, is, is big. The elders obtained a good report. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so things which were seen were not made from things which uh, are visible. And then, this is, this is not in the Bible, but it's in my uh, on my iPad, you know, as a delineation between the different sections. And here's the, this just struck me. And again, it's not scripture, but it struck me. It says, faith at the dawn of history. Faith at the dawn of history. That, that means... Everybody thinks they know what it is. You don't know what it is. You're just hearing a noise and you're speculating. There you go. Thank you. No, you got it. Any more? Let me get a mic for Doug here. You, want, you got any more? Okay. I don't know what that is. It's, is. Is that somebody's phone? It's somebody's phone. I'm not going to embarrass them, but they're getting up and walking out. Don't turn around. <laughs> My Lord, is that your phone? No. Well, how did it go off sitting over there by you? Somebody left it? You're not going to tell me what happened? Oh, I got you. Who's over there messing with you? Danny? All right. All right, I got to start all over again now. It's good to laugh, isn't it? <laughs> Amen. It says, faith at the dawn of history. Do you understand the same faith from the dawn of history is the same faith we operate by right now? That goes way back. But it's exactly the same faith today Lord, that thing is loud. <laughs> Come on now. It's the same faith today, and that's the dawn of history. That's the beginning of civilization. They didn't have those dumb cell phones going off in the middle of Abraham's message. 
Amen. It's still going off. Hey, praise God, it quit. So you, you have the capacity to do something that's always been done. Always been done. You can do the same thing. And so it lists and goes through all of these different uh, people and the way they've operated by faith. And we're, we're not trying to, I'm just, we're just learning from them. Okay, so, you know, I'm not Enoch. I'm not going to walk with God and then disappear one day. You know, but he did. And he, you know how he did it? By faith. You know, Abraham operated by faith. They all operated by faith and operated in, in, in what God promised them. Uh, and, it, and it goes all the way back. And today, those same patterns, those same operations of faith are available for us to live. We can't be them, but a lot of the things that they did by faith, we can do today. And I'm not going to go back and re-preach everything. But, but we can if, if you'll just understand and, and hear that and realize that. Now, we, we stopped off uh, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse uh, 28 where it talked about the fact that by faith, I mean, by faith, Moses kept the Passover. He kept the Passover. Okay, you got that? That means that whatever, whatever uh, thing that God puts in place, we're by faith supposed to keep it. Okay? That's what Abraham did. God said, this is the Passover. And th this is just the beginning. The Passover that I'm instituting is the beginning of something that I want to keep going. I want to carry forward. And you have to do that by faith. Well, do you know you have things that you have to do by faith? We, we actually receive communion. Well, you have to receive it by faith. Water baptism is the same way. But I'm going to shock you and tell you that you're supposed to be in church. I know you're here. But see, that's, the, the Bible tells us that we are to learn how to conduct ourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. That is an ordinance. And you have to come by faith. You have to keep it by faith. Amen. Well, I don't see anything in the Bible about Wednesday night. No, you don't. But I'll, I'll, I'll try to find something to help you with that. But I don't want to get into that. That's not that, that we've already talked about that to a certain degree. And we want to pick up in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. Listen to what it says. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Now, I want you to listen to me. Faith is prepared to pass through anything supernaturally. Faith prepared. You can, do, you can go through anything you face in life by faith and it be supernatural. There's a supernatural element to it, uh, and, and, and you can walk through by faith. It was an act of faith to pass over the Red Sea. Now, I've seen the Red Sea parted. I know how it was done. I went to Hollywood one time, <laughs> to Universal Studios, and they parted the Red Sea right there in front of me, mechanically, and we drove over on concrete. None of that was true. This was wall of sea on both sides. Okay? Wall of sea on both sides. And before they walked on it, it was already dry. That's all supernatural. I heard, I heard one guy was trying to be, be critical about business. Well, you know, they, they actually went in at this point across the Red Sea and the water wasn't but about two feet deep right there. And so it wasn't really that much of a miracle. No, it was a bigger miracle because all of those Egyptians drowned in two feet of water. <laughs> Amen. No, they walked through supernaturally by faith. 
They had to put their feet down on, on that dry bed and walk through there with walls of water on both sides. Thinking, you know, we couldn't get out in the middle of this thing. God could get mad and it'd be over. But they, it says, listen, it says that they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. They had to step into the unknown. You go into, there are several times where the Lord said, uh, told the priest, if, if you'll put your foot in the water, it'll part. But it won't happen until you put your foot in the water. Sometimes, some, some of you are not getting what you need supernaturally because you're not willing to put your foot in the water. Take that first step. So they walked in a place of super, that was supernaturally created for their deliverance. There are times in your life and my life, I can go back and I don't want to get into examples tonight, but, but, but where I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the only way I got out of what I got out of was because God supernaturally prepared a way for me to get out. There was a supernatural deliverance and if I'd have gone any other way, it would not have worked. It, 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 I want to tell you something. Listen, it takes courage to be a person of faith. Because there are going to be times when you want to see the supernatural and the Lord's going to say, okay, well, just step out right here. Well, wait a minute, Lord, I don't see nothing. That's called faith. You want to see the supernatural, sometimes you've got to do things and step out in areas and move into areas that it don't look good. There's nothing, to, nothing good about it. There were no boats. There wasn't a bridge. There was no alternate route. This was it. There was no secret tunnel. There wasn't a path around. One way and one way only. And they had to do it by faith. And when they did, there was a supernatural result. Let me read you Isaiah 43. This ought to encourage you. I, I use this scripture in my own life a lot. Isaiah 43, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, now listen to this, who makes a way in the sea. And a path through the mighty waters. It's, I don't have time to go over there and look at this. Just some other time I will. But over in Job, it actually says that there were footprints in the sea. Footprint. That means that every person that was walking across there by faith, the footprints that they were going to put their feet in were already there. All they had to do was take a step. There are lots of places God wants you to go that the footprints are already there. All you got to do is walk the way he wants you to walk and put your feet where he wants them to be. Instead of saying, explain this to me first, God, then I'll pray about it and think and see where I want to do it. No, put your foot in the footprints. That's called the will of God. It, the divine purposes of God, the divine plans of God. And listen, sometimes the, you won't get some big loud voice. You, may, you won't see the Red Sea parting. All you get is a still small voice. And you got to put that foot in that next step just by that still small voice. I've gone around the world with that still small voice. No big blaring speaker of God telling me to do something, just that knowing that still small voice of the Lord speaking on the inside. And then you just got to put that foot up. I'll just tell you a real quick story just, just to help you. Because this helped me so much when I first got saved. I hadn't been saved very long. And I know clearly that the Lord spoke to me to go and help a minister. He was going to California to do some meetings. I was young in ministry. In fact, I wasn't even in ministry yet. And, but the Lord spoke to me, I want you to go with him and carry his bags and help him. Work his book table, whatever he wants you to do. I didn't have any money. I, I'm telling you, I, I may have had $5. We had, listen, now listen to this. I'm not promoting this. I'm not telling you to do this because it, it was something that the Lord spoke to me to do. And the Lord said, you got a full tank of gas and I, it was in another city. Go to that city and, and, uh, and, I'll, and I'll provide. 
Okay, Lord. So we went to the city. He said, okay, well, we're going to be leaving. And um, 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 uh, I, I forgot the time frame, but we're going to be leaving. And I stayed with that, that minister that night. And the next day, he said, we're going, we're, you know, we, we're going to the airport in the morning. Back then, you didn't actually, you, you could get a reservation. You didn't have to pay for it. You could just get a reservation. So I got reservations for both of us. So we're in line. And I'm thinking, I don't have a credit card. I don't have any money, and I am not telling him to buy my ticket. I got up to the counter. Somebody else, do not know who, had already paid for my ticket. I said, did you pay for my ticket? I asked the minister. He said, no, I didn't do that. But if I had not put those, my foot, now listen, I'm not telling you to be foolish and go think you can put your foot out there and God's going to provide. That's not the way it works. If the footprint isn't there, it isn't going to work. I went out there with him, listen, and, and literally, now he did, he, he helped me, paid for my, uh, my hotel room and I had, I think, $5. And you know, one night he went out to eat with some people, left me in the room and I didn't have any money, nothing. And I, went, I remember going to the snack machine. <laughs> and that was my supper, was that snack machine. But the whole trip out there, God, God blessed me, and I ended up coming home with more money than I left with. Wasn't big money, but it was more. But listen, if God tells you to do something, and you know it's the Lord, then put that foot out. Take a step. Amen. You, you won't see the supernatural just twit on your thumbs. Okay, it's just not going to happen. Now, as a pastor, sometimes I don't like to say this because inevitably somebody will think, well, I'm going to do that. Well, you can't do anything. All you can do is obey and walk by faith. You can't make it happen because you want to make it happen. you got to know. Amen? So, it says that, that God made a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. How many of you have ever heard, uh, uh, ever heard or quoted Psalm 23? What does verse 4 say? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It didn't say walk into, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil, for you are with me your rod and your staff, your word and your Holy Spirit comfort me. So it doesn't say you're not going to, every time's going to be great, but you can walk through the valley of, of the shadow of death. You can walk through a place, and if you listen to God, you can do it by faith. And it may be a difficult time, but you can do it by faith. Maybe you won't see the, part, uh, the Red Sea parted, but you'll be comforted and you'll have strength and the Word of God is with you and the Holy Spirit's with you when you go. Amen? Amen. But now there's one other thing that I want to mention about this. The thing that God uses to provide your deliverance can be destruction to the world. See, it was deliverance for the children of Israel, but the minute the Egyptians got in there, what happened? It was destruction. It is dangerous to play around with Christian things and not be a real Christian. Go ask the seven sons of Sceva. They thought they could cast demons out using that name. Well, guess what? They came out, but guess where they went? Into them. My friend, Terry Mai is a missionary um, uh, friend. He, he, he has a message, uh, and, and he's, in that message he says, he said, yeah, the demon said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who the hell are you? Actually, he says, who in hell are you? Devils know the difference. Okay, I don't want to get... The point is, listen to me. Just because it's good for you doesn't mean it's good for somebody else. 
just because it's good for somebody else, you better be careful that you don't try to copy something and there be no faith there. I believe, listen, I believe as we move forward to this end that we're about to come to, that the supernatural is going to start working to where God can do supernatural things. And then people of the world will say, well, I'm going to try that. And they'll try the same thing you do and it'll be destruction. Because it's just for believers. So the good news is, all right, you ready? The good news is, Faith is always prepared to go, by, go through supernaturally. I don't know what your attitude's been during this, um, this time, if you, especially if you've lost power, you're still without power. What's your attitude? Is it an attitude of faith? Or is it just, I tell you, I'm gonna write a letter to Swepco, or I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna do that, or where, where, where's, where's your faith? Okay, I'm going to move on. I know you want me to, so I'm going to, I'm going to move on. All right, verse, verse 30. Okay, listen to this. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. All right, it's important that you listen to this. Okay, listen. After they were encircled for seven days. After seven days, faith waits on God's timing. I don't want to hear that. I don't want, I don't want to hear that. I want to do it now. I want this now. No, faith waits on God's timing. And his timing and our timing very seldom are the same. Very seldom are they the same. Faith always waits on God's timing. So here we have a plan. Joshua has a plan, all right? God tells him, all right, here's the plan, Joshua, okay? Here's what you're gonna do. You're going to march around the city with all the men of war, and you're going to go around the city once. This you shall do for six days. And the priests are going to bear seven trumpets and horns, and they're going to, uh, and they're going to go with you. Then he said, on the seventh day, you'll march around the city seven times. And the priest shall blow the horn. And it shall come to pass then when they blow the horn that everybody is going to shout. Well, why can't we just shout the first time around and get this over with? Come on, God. I mean, why are you doing this? Because there's always more involved with what God's doing than just your little world. And sometimes it takes timing for, for there to be that supernatural working for everything to come together the way it's supposed to. And you know, sometimes some things are last minute. God, you could have done this a week ago. It would have been a lot better than now. Faith waits on God's timing. It took seven days, every day they got up. Now listen, if you follow this group of people from when they came out of Egypt and all the things and their, and their kids, they were the biggest whining bunch of people you've ever heard in a million years. They whined about everything. They were getting quail on toast and complained about it. That's called manna and... Okay, just so you know. Okay. They, they, they were getting water out of a rock and they complained. Do you think that they were happy about marching around there seven days? Not knowing when is this going to end? What are we going to do? 
Josh says, I'll tell you. Get, just do what I'm telling you. I'll tell you. It, it's going to be all right. No, let's do it now. We're walking around. We, seven, six days. And now, the last, this day, you're saying do it seven times in one day? You have to wait on God's timing. And sometimes, listen to me, I'm just going to tell you right now, it takes faith to wait on God's timing. He told them to wait and be quiet, obey in silence. Yeah, but I need to go tell so and so, and I need to tell so and so, and I need because I'm waiting and I'm not, it's not working. I, I need to tell somebody. Maybe it'll stir somebody out. Up, keep your mouth shut. There are times when you just have to wait. Man, it's hard for me to do that. I can tell you. But you just have to keep your mouth shut. If you go around talking to everybody about everything, thinking that's going to help something, more than likely it's going to prolong whatever it is that you're out there expecting God to do. It's not going to help. It's going to make it worse. You got to wait on his timing. Now listen to me. I have done this the wrong way. And I have done it the right way, and it is so much more glorious to do it the right way. I, I've, I've told this story before probably, but, but years and years ago, I went to, to um, Russia with Dr. Lester Sumrall before communism fell. And we had these meetings in, in several different places, and, and uh, obviously he was the primary speaker, but I got to preach some, and and, and the people were so hungry. We went to a barn out in the middle of nowhere. And, and it, normally you could, might be able to seat 50 people, 100 people in there. There were 300 people in there standing up, stacks. You couldn't have fell down if you, had, if you tried. <laughs> we, we actually, in, I can't remember what city we were in now. We actually got favor to have an auditorium. And so it was packed with people. Dr. Summerall preached, and then he said, and we're going to pray for every person in here. Anybody needs healing in their body. So he called me up there, other people and, 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 uh, up there, and that people were coming up. And I'll never forget, I laid my hands on this, this young lady who was deaf. And, the, and, and I did, the Lord just told me, just put your fingers in her ears. And I put my fingers in her ears. And I rebuked that deaf spirit and I took my fingers out and her eyes just explode, just got so big. Just my eyes were as big as hers. Because <laughs> I'd seen God do some, some things, but not, not like this. And I'm telling you, I got so fired up over that, and then other people got healed, and I got to preach, and, and I, I, I made friends with some of the people that were over there, and they wanted me to come back over there. Okay, I'm going to come. I'm coming. I mean, I came home ready to go right back, pack my bags. I didn't pray about it. I didn't ask the Lord about it. I'm gone. I'm out of here. Well, it's God. It's, no, wait a minute. You better wait on his timing. I didn't wait on anything. I didn't even ask him. I didn't even consult with him. I figured it was good with him. So it wasn't, I, I think maybe it was a month later, maybe, maybe even less than that, I'm, I'm flying back over there. So I, I fly to Sweden, and I'm supposed to meet, meet this guy that we were going to go in, the guy who kind of orchestrated all this to go back in, and um, he'd already left. And he's, he'd left a message for me, hey, meet me in this such and such city the um, uh, day after tomorrow, and, uh, and then we're going go, to go to these different places and preach. I'm already saying, eh, I don't know about this, something. But I was, I mean, I wasn't going to quit. I wasn't going to give up. I wasn't going to give in. So, so, you know, I stayed there at that, in that city and, um, and, and uh, actually met a minister friend. And we had some time to pray while we were there. And, and um, got on the airplane and landed in this, in this city. And I, can't remember the name of the city, but, but 
laid it in, this, in the city. And I get off a plane, and I'm looking around for this guy. I don't see him. And two teenage guys walk up to me, and this is what they said. This is exactly like this. You, Sam Carr? <laughs> yeah, that's all they knew. That's all the English they knew. There was no Google Translate. There was no nothing. They, they did not even, and they handed me a note from this guy, and they said, handed it to me. I'm going ahead day after tomorrow. Take, these two guys are going to take you where I am. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. I found an underground restaurant. They actually ate a steak, got a, got a steak and baked potato. You couldn't get anything over there back in those days. You go to a grocery store, there wasn't anything on the shelves. But you could go underground and, and, and do this. So, so I, I, and I, I'm, I'm getting really antsy about it. And I, I said, you know what? This isn't working. I need to go home. The problem is, in those days, you couldn't go home. Once you set your itinerary, you had to keep that itinerary. There was no going home. I went down to the office there in the hotel and tried to change my ticket, and they went, nope. Went back in my room, and I'm in there praying, and I got to piddling around. There were microphones in my room. I, I, was, I was bugged. I'm thinking, uh, I don't know anybody. Nobody. Nobody. So what do you do? Here's what I did. I fell on my face before God and begged him to forgive me. I knew that I knew that I knew that the timing, that nope, this isn't right. It's not right. But, but listen, thank God he's merciful. He said, I'm going to just teach you a lesson. I'll tell you, I'm going to put you in prison in Russia. I mean, all <laughs> kinds of things run through your mind when, you, when you're over there. Everybody you walk by, you think they're looking at you or following you. I cried out to God. I mean, I just, look, please forgive me. Please, you know, and help me. And the Lord spoke to him and said, go to the airport and change your ticket." Now, I didn't argue. <laughs> I, I was desperate. So I, I got a cab and, and, um, and uh, went out to the airport. And I walked up to the counter and I handed them my ticket, my passport, and, and, and my visa. And I said, uh, uh, I need to change my flight to this, to this flight. And they put, put the, the girl, okay, I'll be happy to do that. punch it in the computer. And said, but you'll have to go to the... the, the, the um, I forgot what the name of that agency was in, in, in there, but you have to go to this agency uh, for them to renew your ticket. So I went back to the hotel, went back to that office and said, uh, they've changed my ticket and they punched it up on the computer. Sure enough, it had changed and they issued me another ticket. And I came home, learned a big lesson. Had somebody preaching for me that Sunday and I walked in and I just stopped the whole service and said, I just want to tell you your pastor's an idiot. <laughs> I just, I miss God. Man, I had him praying for me. You know, I'm going over there. And I, and, and I, just, asked, I just said, you just, just forgive me. Listen to me. It's much better. You listening to what I'm saying? It's much better to wait on God's timing. I, I, I have been, I have pastored long enough and I beg people to wait. They don't wait and then they're calling me. I need help. I don't, I'm out here. I'm this, I'm that. And they wouldn't wait. Okay, everybody's still with me. There are going to always be times, listen to me, that are silent. And you better know, keep your mouth shut. Silent times are important. You're not going to make it happen. You've got to wait on his timing. You think about 
the Apostle Paul. Paul wanted to go preach. He was in Acts chapter 16, and I'm not going to read all this. Um, um, he wanted to go to Asia, and the Holy Spirit said no. He didn't go to Asia. He, didn't, he obeyed. They wanted to go to Bithynia. The Spirit wouldn't let them. Then a vision appeared of a man from Macedonia. And Paul said, I know what we're supposed to do now. But listen to me. He had to wait on God's timing. You start pushing, trying to make things happen. Listen to me. Sometimes you might be able to make something happen, but if you wait on God's timing and all of the things that need to come to place, come to place, it is amazing what God can do. It's amazing what God can do. Uh, that man and his whole family, that jailer, th were totally delivered, got saved, got baptized because Paul waited on God's timing. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 says this, Let us not grow weary while doing good. In due season, we shall reap if we don't lose heart. That word season is, a, is the Greek word kairos, and it means time. In due time. Don't get weary in well-doing. He's talking here about giving. Don't get weary in giving and say, well, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything. Wait on God's time because in due time, you'll reap if you don't lose it, if you don't faint, you don't quit, if you don't lose heart. Amen? Amen? All right. Verse 31. I'm going to have to hurry here. Oh, by the way, well, we've got plenty of time, right? This is the longest day of the year. <laughs> right? Got plenty of daylight, so no hurry. Some of you are probably happy to be in air conditioning. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Yeah, I know. All right. Hebrews chapter 11 Listen to verse 31. By faith, the harlot, the what? The that, that, that's a prostitute, okay? Did not perish with those who did not believe. Now listen to this. When she had received the spies with peace. All right, now listen. Faith goes against the multitudes. Let me tell you, if you're going to follow the multitude, you're going to be in trouble. This woman, and I talked to, the, to those spies and said, I'm going to just paraphrase it, I heard about you. We heard about the Red Sea parting. We heard about what happened to the Egyptians. We heard about how you're, how you're defeating people and you're moving across the country. We heard about your God and how great he is and how powerful of God he is. We've heard about all that and I want to be in on it. And I'm going to turn my back on this whole city, everybody, because I want to be with you. She perceived the power and the destiny of the children of God and not willing to go with the multitudes. The multitudes are fickle. They're one way in, one way here. You better stick with Jesus. You better keep your focus in the right place. Over in Acts chapter 13, listen to this. The Bible says the Holy Spirit said, separate unto me, Saul and Barnabas, for the work whereof I do, I've called them. They laid hands on them and they sent them out. Man, they were, they were having great meetings, doing wonderful things. They were preaching in the synagogues, got kicked out of the synagogues, and the Gentiles begged them to come the next Sabbath and preach. And so they came and preached, and all these people were getting saved. In verse 45, it says, When the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy, contradicting and blaspheming, and they opposed the things spoken by Paul. It just made Paul and them bolder. But now listen to this. Verse 30, it says, The Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city and raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from the region. 
One minute they got everybody's ear. They think they're the greatest thing since apple pie. And now all of a sudden they're kicking them out of the city. So you know what Paul and Barnabas did? They dusted off their feet and said, we're, on the, we're, we're, we're going to the next town. Went to the next town. Guess what? Same thing happened. This time they had a miracle. And then they were going to make gods out of them. And after they were going to make gods out of them, the next thing you know, they're stoning them. The multitudes are fickle. Be careful. Faith always goes against the multitudes. You think about the woman with the issue of blood. Everything about her said you can't touch Jesus. You can't be around people because you have an issue of blood. But her face said, I'm going to touch him. And right in front of a priest, Jairus, who had the, the right to point his finger and say stoner, and they would have done it. Listen to me. That woman went against the multitudes, pressed into that crowd, touched the hem of his garment, and healing came into her body. And Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Nobody could argue with her. She's not unclean anymore. She's clean. She's healed. Got to be careful of the multitudes. Because listen, there were all kinds of people touching her, touching Jesus, getting nothing. Just because a multitude says there ain't nothing to healing, just because a multitude says there ain't nothing to the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I know people, you know, that, that large churches that preach and say, that, well, speaking in tongues is of the devil. Well, I don't care what they say. I know the truth. You better be careful. Faith goes against the multitudes. All right, this is the last one. And I'm going to have to read all this, so it's going to take a minute. So listen to this. Verse 32. What more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, y'all still with me? Obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness, were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Woo! Well, let me read the rest. Others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial, mock, tri, uh, had trial of mockings and scourgings and chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder in two, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy they wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. All these having obtained a good testimony through faith. Through what? Faith. Through faith. See, sometimes people try to give you the idea just because you have a battle in life or even if you're persecuted, that, well, where's your faith? Well, it's working. It's working. All these having obtained a good testimony through faith did not receive the promise, God providing something better for us, that's me and you, that we should not be made perfect, uh, that they should not be made par perfect apart from us. All right, here's the, here's the note. Listen, you ready? You read all those things. They're all different. A lot of big things. Man, I like the, new, the positive ones. Don't even talk about the negative ones. Just leave, you know. If they come, they come. But let's talk about the other, the other side of it, okay? But listen to this. Faith operates under all circumstances. Now, that's important for you to hear. Because sometimes, and I've had to deal with people in the past, where they, their faith was so narrowed that they, they, they wouldn't even accept a doctor's report. 
I, I remember hearing a doctor one time years ago. Man, we, you know, when I first got turned on to faith, man, you better, you better not say a bad confession out of your mouth. You better not say you feel bad or you got a headache, even if you did. You better not say anything like that. I mean, I believe we ought to speak the word. Don't, okay. So, but this doctor was talking about, he said, yeah, he said, I have these Rhema students. And they'll, <clears throat> they'll, they'll come in and come into the, my office and, and I said, well, what, what are you here for? Well, I'm healed. <laughs> well, 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 why are you here? And so finally he figured out, he said, what is it that you don't have that you're calling those things that be not as though they were? <laughs> and he'd have to go around the mountain to find out what they were really there for. Sometimes people get faith so narrowed down. I, I know, listen, I, sad situation, okay? Sad situation. Many, many years ago, there was a, a lady in our church who, who had cancer, and she was believing God, and I, and I was standing and praying with her, but I encourage you to go to the doctor and let them do treatment, because to be honest, the cancer she had was treatable. Yeah. No, I'm standing by faith. I'm believing God. I'm not going to do that. I'm believing God. I'll never forget standing at her bedside in her last last days of her life with tears in her eyes saying, I should have listened to you. <clears throat> Listen, faith works with doctors. Yeah. God's best is supernatural healing. But let me tell you something. If I need to go to the doctor, I'm going to go to the doctor and I'm going to use all the faith I've got. Listen to me. That God's going to work even if he has to work through a doctor to keep me on this planet to preach the gospel. <laughs> Always believing for a miracle. Always standing, but I'm not stupid. My faith will work in every... Listen, I found out that my faith can work with this scripture in Psalm, God, that, that God will work with those who work with you. Man, I've used that so many times in my life. Now, Lord... They're working with me. They're trying to help me. They're trying to work with me in my life. And I just believe right now that you're working with them, working for me, helping me. Is healing for today? Absolutely. Sure it is. I've been healed many times. But listen to me. Sometimes, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Sometimes you've got to, your, your faith has to be in a, in a different area because you're going to get discouraged if, you, if, you, if, you, if things don't go perfectly. And, and you don't have to. Don't get discouraged. Listen, when Becky and the, and the, and the girls were in that car wreck, you know, there are, there are lots of things you can say, well, we're believing for total healing, total restoration, and we're, you know, and, and, and that's, we were believing that. But let me tell you what we did. We've set our faith on the fact that we're in this hospital and that, that we've got challenges here. We're believing, that, and, and we, we believe the end result is going to be that these, all three of them are going to walk out of this hospital healed, healthy, and whole. I didn't go around trying to tell God how to do it. All I did was declare what we were believing and that we worked through the doctors. Now, Lindsay didn't. She, God supernaturally healed her. The other two, it took a while. <clears throat> but the point is, sometimes if you're not careful, your faith will work in any situation. You don't have to try to make it fit into, squeeze it into something because you heard somebody's testimony about how they did something. Well, that may not be where you are. So if you got to go to the doctor, and, and I know this may be a little controversial. Well, I just only want Christian doctors. I want the best doctor. Okay, no offense. I'm, listen, Becky, Becky's doctor, primary care doctor, I don't go to the same one she does. It's a lady, and she's a spirit-filled Christian. She'll prophesy over you in a heartbeat. And she's a good doctor. I'd recommend her. But the, don't come ask me who she is. I'm not telling you. Okay? <laughs> but my point is, listen, God can work with anybody. When I, I started having trouble with my heart, 
you know, and, and, and I went to him. My, my heart doctor was a Muslim. But before it was over with, he told me he believed Jesus was a Messiah. So you understand what I'm saying? But he was good at what he did. So just be careful about that. Don't get yourself in such a, don't bind yourself up with your faith. Put your faith out there where God can work wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever your circumstances are. Quit telling him how you've got to manufacture something. It's amazing. God will work in all those circumstances. Faith in different areas, but it's the same God. Use your faith where you are. Faith is confidence in God's ability, not yours. I, a lot of times when I've talked to people in the past, especially more, not as much lately, but, but I, first thing I had to do was find out where their faith was. Because a lot of their faith is not, they want it to be, but it's not there. Well, go, go to the doctor. Let's get our faith on that, that the doctor can find out what's wrong and, and help you. I had something happen that was kind of unusual. Um, and I know it's kind of telling on my, I, my son probably wouldn't appreciate that much. But, but Taylor, Taylor's AD, ADHD. Under the tables when he was young, ADHD. Climbing the walls, ADHD. I mean, sit down. Well, then stand up. Get out from under the table. <laughs> among other things. And man, we're praying, we're believing, you know. And, and the Lord helped me with something with that. Because we went to this doctor who was very was renowned for this. He said, look, you can give him this medication and it will help him focus. And so we didn't want to do it. Well, we don't want to give him medicine, you know, this, that. I mean, and there are side effects to medicine. Don't misunderstand me, okay? But the Lord used a scripture to help me with this because I was praying about it. And he said, I said, Lord, what about it? He said, all you're going to do is give him something so the devil can't take advantage of him. You know, it's hard to have faith and think if your head's pounding all the time when you could go take aspirin or Tylenol or something. Y'all still with me? I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not negating the redemptive work of Jesus at all. I'm just trying to get you to stick where, where, where's your faith. That's where you gotta be. Stay, stay where your faith is. And if you if you can get just get if you can get some relief, then you can do it. Now, you know, Taylor doesn't have to take, he doesn't take anything. I called him one day here recently, no, a while back, and I said, What are you doing? He said, playing with dynamite. <laughs> he works in the oil field. He he actually runs electronic equipment now in, in the oil field, but he doesn't need any of that now. But the point is, listen. The Lord helped me with that, that that was just going to keep, keep the devil off of him from tormenting him because of that until we get a handle on it. You got to use your faith where you are. Well, I don't agree with that. Well, don't do it. I'm just trying to help you. But those are all patterns of faith we can look at. Okay. And in, in, in different, different times, different situations demand different operation of faith. You can play with your life if you want to, but I want to figure out I'm going to live and not die and do whatever I have to do with my faith to do that so I can do what God has for me and walk in the will of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Did y'all get anything out of this tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, there are all sorts of operations of faith that you can jump into and God can use you. And I, I, I'm really, after the Freedom Crusade, I'm going to actually teach on faith probably the rest of the summer. Uh, because there are principles of faith that work all the time. If you just apply them to your life. 
they'll work all the time. Amen? Hallelujah. Jeffrey, are you back there somewhere? There he is. He's had an opportunity to use his faith. He was in the intensive care, not intensive care, uh, ER with his son for how long? Three days? Yeah, three Three days. days. Yeah. Couldn't get, get in the hospital and they wouldn't let him go. Power was out in the emergency room while they were there. Yeah. Praise God, he's at home now. <laughs> he's at home. Good report. Good report. And That's he's healed. Right. So yeah, but absolutely. I, we were, hey, we were praying the whole time, just believing God. Amen. Absolutely. All right. Amen. Weren't you encouraged tonight? Amen. I forgot. No, you're good, Pastor Tim. You're supposed to remind me. <laughs> Stretch out your hand. Let's pray over these prayer requests. Father, we thank you. You're working. Lord, we're boldly declaring every one of these needs. Every one of them, Father, is met in the name of Jesus. Lord, for this daughter to come back to the Lord. Father, for this supernatural restoration of, of family in the name of Jesus. For healing in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for healing, for, for and the power of your Holy Spirit working in every one of these lives, these, this marriage, Father, that you work supernaturally. Lord, I thank you for uh, uh, favor and faith in the working of everything that these need, Father, for their ministry. Lord, I pray that this person, they want to get married this year. They're not married yet because I know them, but that doesn't mean it's not coming. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, I just thank you and praise you. You know, a lot of these prayer requests are for family, kids, different people in families that need, need uh, God working in their lives. And I believe in the name of Jesus, Father that you're working in them. We're standing boldly with these. Every need is met. Complete healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just give you praise and honor and glory. Amen, amen. Praise God. Amen, amen. You know, Pastor Sam, talking about faith, it's, it's great because some of you, you are ready to use your faith to take some next steps in your life. You said, there's something else for me. There's something else beyond where I am right now. And we want to help you do that. And the seat back in front of you is the card. And you can do this in any service. You grab the card at the bottom. It says, I'm ready for my next steps. You check that box, place it in the containers on your way out, and we will get in contact with you to help you take whatever that next step is that you're ready to take. Can you say amen? And there's a couple of things I want to remind you of coming up couple different opportunities for us really to exercise our faith and use it this week coming up Monday through Friday at noon everybody say noon all right at noon right here in the sanctuary we're gonna be praying for the freedom crusade all right Monday through Friday at noon here that's an awesome opportunity for you to use your faith for God to move just expecting that he's gonna do incredible things during the freedom crusade also happening next week Monday night We'll be praying at 6.30 here as well. So on Monday, we're going to be praying twice, noon and 6.30. So make sure you come and join us, link up together so that we can pray for something incredible to happen at the Freedom Crusade. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Well, do me a favor, stand with me. If you brought your tithes, you brought your offerings, the containers are going to be in the back as you exit. Just make sure you place that in there. We hope you have an incredible week. We will see you Sunday morning. You are dismissed.